Welcome to On the Table. I'm Corey, and I'm here with Rebecca and Rachel. And today we are going to be talking about the healthy habits of every Christian. But first, I want to kind of get to know you guys even more and ask about one of your habits. So get ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> the question is, I, I, I want to know, what do you do when you get home from work? Like everyone has the things that they first do thing. every day. So what's the first thing that you do when you get home from work? Before I'm even in the door, mm -hmm. I usually hear my dog whining. Mm -hmm. And so I mm -hmm. usually respond to him. I know you're not supposed to verbally talk to them when they get home if they're worked up and so they the professionals tell you not to, but I can't help it. Professionals. <laughs> so they're you know, professional dog trainers. <laughs> dog people. Dog people. They say not to. I do and it's usually baby talk. Mm. It's mm. usually mm. hello, my handsome. And it goes on from there, and I won't. I won't. You don't want to keep going. No, with that. <laughs> no. That's what I do. Hmm. Right. And then I go find sweatpants. Right. Okay. That's such a good order of things. Because skinny to do. jeans after work. It's like, you know what? I'm, I'm no, done. No, thank you. I'm we done. don't need that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sweatpants. Yeah. Mine's similar. We have a puppy, and she's about ten months old. So when we're there, she's here when we walk in. <laughs> so it's hard to ignore. <laughs> so we feed the dog, pet the dog, and when, when she's all excited, she just spins. She oh, just gets so excited. She's cute. still in that kind of puppy stage. That's cute. So you can't ignore that. So we mm, let yeah. her out right away or else we have accidents. So yeah. that is always <laughs> the first thing we do. That yeah. makes sense. Yes. And then we yeah. just feed everybody. Dog, humans, yeah. everyone gets everyone food. Everyone gets fed food. because everyone's... Yeah. We need it. Everyone's starving. Even if I we get, get home hangry. from yeah, oh, everyone gets yes. home from we get home from work from work early, and yes. they're still like, no, it's dinner time. Mm -hmm. If you're here in the it's kitchen, true. it's true. It's dinner time. <laughs> it's true. So, it's a pain. What about you? Uh, yeah, I I get in the door, put my baby seat down, my my baby's car seat. I say hi to my dog. I put stretchy pants on. <laughs> I get a snack. That's normally the nice. order. Yeah, nice. get my get a snack. Get Stretchy my pad baby pants out. come before the snack. Just so. before the snack, because yeah. then normally I make dinner. You can be so. comfortable. Yeah. It's good. And and then eat as opposed to eating and then go get comfortable. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to be comfortable when you eat. I don't know about you guys, but I generally make a better dinner if I had a snack. Or yeah. are, am currently consuming Because you have patience. <laughs> I was going to say, it's you the patience, patience factor. I'm yeah. I'll is. actually look at a recipe because if not, it's like craft dinner. <laughs> you know? Quick, so, get food. Pizza pocket. Yeah. Yeah. What's the fastest thing? We all have thing? those. Yeah. What's yeah. the fastest thing? Because yeah. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. And I don't always make dinner, to be fair. My husband makes dinner probably more than I do. Nice. So, to be fair, it's usually I watch him make dinner. Because mm -hmm. he's one of those. He's one of those <laughs> I don't husbands. Cook. Yeah. yeah. He's a way better cook than I am. Right. And I'm a way better cleaner than he is. So, like, that's so how that we just, works. It has to. Yeah, that's, that's nice. what we do. Only yeah. because, because Andrew really loves cooking, I've pretty much been kicked out of my kitchen. So I, I'm allowed mm, to organize right. it, even though yeah. he doesn't like my system. It doesn't work for him. So mm. he's slowly winning that argument, too, which is really, like, I'm not letting him know that he's winning because I don't want him to know that he can just... He's going to know I like now. where my mugs are, okay? It's right. just, it makes sense to me. But he does all the cooking, so... That's fair. Yeah, but no, it, that's, fair. that's fair. For, yeah, if he's in yeah. there a lot. And he, like, he <laughs> likes making not just cooking regular dinners he likes to like he bakes bread and yeah, he gets experimental with it yeah, yeah so mm, that's awesome. nice his cinnamon bun phase was pretty awesome i even reaped some of the benefits yeah, from i think everyone bun needs phase. a cinnamon bun phase <laughs> yeah. in their life he was it's really true. committed to finding the best recipe and we were committed to helping him eat all the recipes yeah and well because after a while Good you're like you i can't guys. just eat mm. a dozen those Every are good week. friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Millions wouldn't, but we were there. We were there <laughs> for them. Millions wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we digress. Okay, so we've bit. talked a little bit about our habits. So our topic on the table today is actually healthy habits of of every Christian. Yep. So yes. in your opinion, what are healthy habits that every Christian should adopt? Yeah. Who wants to go and, first? And to be fair with this, it's other than reading your Bible and praying. Yes. Those are the two obvious We're ones. We're assuming that yeah. you already do that. Yeah, and so if you don't, pause do. <laughs> and take 28 days, go make that a habit, and then come back. <laughs> and we'll see you in 28 habits. days <laughs> after those are established in your life. Mm -hmm. All right, um, well, my first one was, um, I'm a goal setter, so setting spiritual goals. Okay. So a goal that would draw you closer to the Lord. So 
and it could be anything. It's I know it's really broad, but um, be, say be more faithful for attending mm -hmm. services or um, start helping out if you don't already, or if you do, how can you be more effective? It's so like helping out, out in a ministry in, in a church. ministries at church okay. or or however something that will that gets you involved in God's work mm -hmm. in God's mm -hmm. ministry, mm -hmm. um, but some some sort of spiritual goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm doesn't really matter what it is. It's a great one. Okay. Focusing on goals. Mm -hmm. Mine, um, my first one would be having a regular Bible teaching in your life, not just Bible study, mm -hmm. but actual Bible teaching. Because I think that so often, like I've seen people who do just have Bible study. Mm -hmm. You mean outside of church or including It, it could be in church. It could be outside church. It could be online church. It could be, could be right. other things, but some kind of Bible teaching. Um, because when you're only studying on your own, I find that theology can just go way yeah. off because there's no one challenging you on what yeah. you believe. Mm -hmm. There's no one presenting different options. Different perspectives. So is so important. That's definitely one of them. And I would, I would yeah. say yeah. if you're not going to church regularly, all three of my points are going <laughs> to hit on that. Mm -hmm. But like when you, when you look at the early church too, like Acts um, 2 verse 42 says, and they were continually, they're talking about the apostles um, and their apostles after um, people who were right. following them. Mm -hmm. And they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking bread and to prayer. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's it's such a thing that the early church did. It's something Jesus did. Jesus went to the synagogue every Sunday. Talks about it in Luke 4, yeah. verse 16. It was a custom for him to go to the synagogue. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus needs Bible teaching, <laughs> you do too. This is a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely something to be said for having other voices in your head sure. when it comes to yeah, the sure. Bible. And, yeah. and, and like through the internet and stuff, we do have so many other ways you can do it. It doesn't necessarily totally. have to be church, yeah. but that's an option that's usually presented and available to you. Mm -hmm. That's very easy to go to. And even when, yep. you're, even when you are going to church, it's not necessarily going going to match up with the, the mm -hmm. pastor's not necessarily going to match up to what you're personally studying at that moment. Yes. So it's always really helpful to yeah. have um, like YouTubing a speaker yeah. or yeah. getting a book that's going along with yeah. some of that you're And there reading. is the spiritual gift of teaching. So yes. there are people who do have this yeah. and that's something that if, if God's given that as a spiritual gift, he's done that for a reason. Yep. Mm. So let's listen. To let's that. listen and be challenged mm -hmm. and grow. There's a from lot it. of good mm -hmm. resources now. So there you is. almost don't really have an excuse. To yeah. Yes. Not. Yes. It's I would agree true. with that one. I think jump in. Okay. So my first one was, um, be self-reflective. So mm -hmm. okay. have, have a moment in, in your day where you stop and you think about, um, think about what you've done that day and kind of dissect it. Um, and the, the reason why I say that is, is you want to make sure that you're applying what you're reading in the Bible and what, and what yep. you know into your yep. life. And that, you know, when you stop and you actually think about conversations that you had, you know, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that about that person. Maybe that was a little bit too close to gossip or maybe you outright gossip that day. Yep. But if you don't stop and think about your day, right. um, bad habits can really slip in they can. to mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way that I have tried to frame my life is I try to have a moment every day where I'm being self-reflective. I'm thinking of what I did that day, what I said, what I thought, um, patterns of thinking that I don't like. And w as you get used to reflecting on yourself, yeah. The, yeah. it'll start happening in the moment. So yeah. you'll be in a conversation with someone and you'll say something and in inside your head you'll be like, oh, why did I just say that? What yeah. just came? What just came out of yeah. me? Or and you can check it right there. You can check it right there and then deal with that That's later cool. on. So really being self-reflective, I think, is important so that you don't become one of those Christians who doesn't apply the yeah. Word of God to your life. Yeah. Do you have a specific way you self-reflect? Like I know there's some people who keep <clears throat> journals or or things like that, or is it just yeah. like a, a shower moment as they're called sometimes? Mostly shower <laughs> moments, honestly. It's like shower moments or if I can't sleep, like awesome. before I go to bed as I'm like winding down, I think about mm. things or when I get up, if my baby's still sleeping, that's, I'll have a cup of coffee and I'll... Praise Jesus for that. And then... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I got to move on um, because I, I love the idea of journaling, but I just have not been disciplined enough to mm -hmm. journal. I usually don't stick with it for very long so I have right. like periods where I'm like for a week I journal and then yeah. a year later I journal again right mm -hmm. so it's yeah. that one's harder for me but yeah it's not one of my habits but definitely the self-reflection I have tried to yeah, get in that's there awesome. it's a really good that's one. a good one Thanks. okay I um, think uh, serving others is my number two mm. so because Christ is our example of service and our service is born from a love of of him um, it's important. It's uh, like Matthew twenty twenty eight, 
um, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, I think it's important to not to get too works based, mm -hmm. but it's important to to serve others. Um, James is that's all over James. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say definitely serving others, and there's various ways to do that through different ministries, mm -hmm. um, or and it doesn't even have to be in association with ministries. There's like just day to day people in your life that you see. How can you yeah. serve them as part right. of your um, outreach or witness? Yeah. Um, of the Lord. Well, it's, that's totally important to change your perspective on people because, yeah. you know, to emulate Christ, which is what we're trying to do, to be more like God, he didn't consider, like if that's in Colossians, he didn't consider himself his great position. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, he, he forfeited his great position to come and to serve humanity and to put others, others' needs above his yeah. own. Um, and so, yeah, I mean. And that's our job too. So that's mm -hmm. a really good practice on, okay, no, I'm going to practice doing what Jesus said yeah. Yeah. and putting others before myself. Yeah. And especially if you have someone that you're, you're mad at, you can't really deal with. Mm -hmm. I feel like the best way to combat that is if yeah. you're trying to find a way to serve them, you just can't be mad at them anymore after that. Once you pray for them and start serving them in yeah. some kind of area, yeah. Yeah. then that's going to like crumble. It's mm -hmm. going to, it's going to go away so yeah. fast. I mm -hmm. feel like that's such a, a big thing too. To totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Uh, my next one is still church related. Yay, <laughs> themes. <laughs> but mine would be um, fellowshipping with other believers. I know fellowship can be a big word that we don't use, but getting yeah. together with other people, like-minded people yep. who can also challenge you on your faith and what yeah. you believe. And um, my main verse that I would use to for biblically for this is there's a verse in Hebrews 10, uh, verse 22, and it says, let us draw near to God uh, with sincere, sincere heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed and then it keeps going and it says um let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching and day is capital d is in jesus mm -hmm. um, but i feel like that's such an important thing too and, and again in church you will have this automatically um is is when you are fellowshipping with other believers same thing you're going to be challenged but you're also going to be encouraged mm -hmm. which is huge right. mm -hmm. you're going to have people who are like-minded and it's not just christians who do this like there's yeah. conferences for everything now mm -hmm. where you That's can true. go and have mm -hmm. like-minded people but but christ does this and and we see it with the disciples we see it with so many different things yeah. where they would gather together for this and have fellowship with believers and challenge each other encourage each other use gifts together all yeah. kinds of things minister together yeah and i feel like that's something again that we just need to make sure that we're having especially in an internet culture that we live in totally. because so much of it is is click 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 yeah only on our phones mm -hmm. it needs to also be in person put the phones down for a little while yeah. and talk mm -hmm. if you're not that you can't you yeah, yeah. And, and, and i think too uh, i just like want to add a caveat to this because i totally agree with what you're saying mm -hmm. uh, but also i think a lot of people have this fallacy where like-minded people means you agree on everything no yes and you totally don't <laughs> no, and so don't. a lot of people walk away from um walk away from a church gathering or like mm -hmm. somewhere where they've talked about god and they they feel like angry and they feel discouraged because yeah. people have different ideas about god than they do yep and but it's the way that you look at that too. People, you know, if you've walked away from a really intense conversation about God and, and, and you you both really care at that yeah. point, even if you disagree, you both really care. And that's something that is tremendously um, encouraging. Yes, that there's yes. other people out there that care just mm -hmm. as much as you do so that you can have that conversation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it does, yeah. it talks about in Romans and Corinthians, um, it talks about the body of Christ too. Yeah. And I feel like that's a huge point with this too, because mm -hmm. that's sort of how church functions is with different parts, feet, hands, everything else that you've got going on. Everyone has on. a different role. You a need to fellowship function. for that yeah. to happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it might mean that, you know, I have a strength in one area, you might have a strength in a totally different mm -hmm. area, and you might have a strength in a completely different area again. But bring that all together and that's when you can yep. you can minister properly. Yeah. And and again, it doesn't mean you agree on every single issue. In fact, I would encourage you to find people you don't agree with every that issue challenge. on. Yeah. That yes. challenge where iron does sharpen iron. You need to have that. Mm -hmm. It's a really important thing. Yeah. yeah. My second one was similar to yours, Rachel, because yours was serving people, but mine is praying for people who bug you. <laughs> and <laughs> That's a really a good, good one. one. This is something that my Nana and my mom stuck to me when I was a teenager. Because, right. you know, teenage girls, we talk to our moms. We talk, I have a really close relationship with my mom and with my Nana. And I would go and I would start to complain. And they'd, they'd just go, they'd let me complain. Yep. And then they'd go, well, have you been praying for that person? Yep. Oh, <laughs> that's so annoying. Punch them in the face When you that. just want to complain, right? 
you just want yeah. to complain. And you I don't want, want to pray for them. I don't want to spend yeah. time thinking about them unless it's negatively. Yeah, you want, <laughs> you, at that moment, I yeah. wanted my mom to just be like, Pfft. That's, that person sounds awful. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You don't have right. to be friends with yeah. them. Yeah. 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 You're, you're totally you're better justified. than that. <laughs> yeah. You want to But hear that's that. not what they said. No. They said you have to pray for people who bug you because, and, and the principle being that God loves that person as much as he loves you. Jesus yep. Christ died for their sins and he thought of them and created them. Yeah. So you have no right to be, stay in your annoyance with them and stay yep. in your anger. So it cultivates uh, a love for yes. people and a concern for people that may not naturally be there because yeah. we all have different personalities that Wait. naturally grind. Yeah, we don't all so. agree. You don't naturally love everyone? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say yes, but then I'd be lying. <laughs> that's not a healthy habit. <laughs> so, yeah. No, that's a really good one. And it's a good it's point, a really good too, one. because prayer does change your perspective. It does. When you start spending time actively praying for people, um, whether you already like them or not, your, mm -hmm. your perspective on them changes and your heart grows for them. And that's where I think a lot of problems in the world could be solved yeah. is if we just started lifting each other up and praying for one another and actually starting to care about mm -hmm. one another instead of yes. just going, well, I don't like them. They're just terrible people. Yes. So, because that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they Everyone probably think that about somewhere. you as well. Yeah. So that's a good one. Yeah. Um, and my last one is uh, cultivate talents in others. So mentorship. Okay. Um, I think it's important. Big word. <laughs> Drop that. <Yeah. laughs> we'll just leave that there. Let it marinate. Um, for to um, to be and to do as well. Um, I think it's important for and, and we see this a lot within the church with generations. Um, there are a lot of people, um, younger people, who look up to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the older generations sure. as mentors and then those as we become the older generations to mm -hmm. also mentor. But it seems that I find a lot of people that I respect have mentors, but also are, are mentors. It's, and it's not something that you are one or you do one. Mm -hmm. You can do both at the same time because mm -hmm. we all need mm -hmm. to have that input into each other's lives, but yeah. also from others' lives. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so like caring say, enough to yeah. get someone else's yeah. opinion and trust and help yeah. and then also caring enough about someone else to do the same to do yeah. the same yeah. and to be that trustworthy person that they can come to and it's frankly it's a lot of work it's mm. a lot of work to spend <clears> a lot of time me, that much time and effort into somebody's yeah. life mm. but it's really important mm. Definitely. So. It's definitely one of those key things that needs to be happening. And it's biblical too. Like like they did that in the early church again, mm -hmm. where the older women would take the younger women and they would talk yep. and they would just share Help that wisdom. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And in a way, like like I've had I've had people mentor me through different jobs or just different circumstances and like mm -hmm. the amount of wisdom that some of these older women or older men mm -hmm. or older yeah. people have, the amount of life experience that they have is outstanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like I feel like there would have been mistakes made in my life if I hadn't had good counsel from things. And, yep. mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of women, I'm, I'm really thankful to say, a lot of women in my life who have counseled me that way yep. and have invested the mm -hmm. time in that way, which is remarkable mm -hmm. and, yeah. and really encouraging that it, it is still something that goes on today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, totally. Cool. Uh, my next point was regularly using your spiritual gifts to minister to others. So sort of similar. Um, mine would be specifically in the church. And okay. just kind of sticking with my theme <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is in the church. Like one of the reasons I think... Um, we have a, we have a huge movement in today's day and age, and I'd say especially people my generation where we like online church. Oh yeah, and, yep. and <laughs> one step lie. removed. One yes, yep. there is a barrier there. I, you yep. are on a screen. I'm not in the screen. Yep. <laughs> Breakfast in bed. Yep. Yes. So I'm not going to say that there's not things <laughs> going for that, but there's a couple things against it. So one of the verses um, that I wanted to use for this is First Peter four verse ten, where it says each one should use whatever gifts he has received to serve others faithfully, faithfully administering. God's God's grace in its various forms. Mm. I think it's pretty clear, you know, God does give us spiritual gifts, men and women, and we are supposed to use that to support others. And I would say it's something that actually I feel is lacking in the church right now. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things where um, yeah. when you are in a church, it's the same like 10 people running everything. And I think yeah. that yeah. can be such a difficult thing. And I think that's why when you when you do an online church, Sure, you're getting something from that, yep. but a lot of God's blessing comes from when you give to that as well. Yeah. And I know like from having taught um, discipleship class or doing kids church or whatever it is, 
you learn so much yourself from yeah, having to yeah. do that, having to do the research to teach, having to have the patience to, to yeah. deal with kids as they scream yeah. at you and throw balls, you know, things like that. I think that's one of those things that God blesses you so much when you listen to him in that area of your life that it's it's absolutely a habit you want to have. So, so like all three of the things that I was talking about, if you go to church regularly, it's one of those things that you're going to be amazed, the blessing that comes from that, yeah. from going to yeah. a Bible-believing church, from how much your faith is going to grow from that. Because when yeah. you do just have an online church or a podcast or something that you're listening to and that's really where you're only getting it, mm -hmm. you don't have that direct interaction and challenge. Yeah. Like yeah. If, if, if I watch something and I'm like, oh my goodness, like they just presented that in the best way ever, and then I go talk to someone about it, someone can say like something that's even less convincing, but since it's face-to-face -face interaction, it comes across differently, yes. Yes. right? And I think that's one of the, one of the important things to be doing as Christians and to invest in people. Yes. And when you when you do have administrative skills or encouraging skills or whatever it is, it's important to use those <laughs> yes. for yeah. Christ. We're meant to be engaged and we're Absolutely. created we're social as beings. relational. Yes. yes. Yeah. And totally. without that, you know, engagement, yeah. Yeah. you're not working at full yeah. capacity. And I, I know one of the things I always hear against churches is, well, how can I go to church? Like everyone judges me so often. And, and I know that's right. a, a huge one. Humans, I've experienced yeah, it. Like people. it sucks, yeah. but it, it's people are people. And yeah. honestly, you're going to grow from those experiences. So again, yeah. it might not be such a bad thing to put yourself in situations mm -hmm. where you are going to be a bit vulnerable. It's going to be a bit tough. Yeah. Go to the church greeters. They're always so nice. But <laughs> this is true. Start with them. Safe start zone. That. It's a safe zone. <laughs> and, and, you know, it might take you some time to find a church, but you do yeah. want to do yeah. that and have those that habit in your life of going and being encouraged. You're going to be mm. amazed what you see out of that. It's mm -hmm. not okay to live your life in, in like the internet bubble, though. Mm -hmm. Like the internet is such a wonderful tool, mm -hmm. but we, we, I think our culture is losing something about face to face mm -hmm. in, in a lot of, not just church, in a lot of circles. And I mean, the internet was a great addition for Sunday services. If you're homesick yeah. and you're like, you know what, I can't get to church because or I don't want to spread. Or if you're in a remote area. Or if you're in a yes. remote area, it's it's really great for that that extra. So you you know, and or for disabilities, for anything where you can't get to a church regularly, yes. that's great. It's amazing. But it's really important to physically be there to have yes. that face to face because there's an accountability that comes with that. There's there's just so many things that, that we're losing, and yeah. I. Mm -hmm. I think our next generation is going to see some yeah. strange challenges mm -hmm. because we're losing that that ability right. to connect with each yeah. other yeah. in a way that is really important to keep. Yeah, yeah. So. definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, so my uh, last point here, last habit was... Uh, application challenges. So you... What is that? <laughs> it's, Corey, it's, you tell. This is something that I, I've done in my own life. So it's, it's you choose something to work on for a time. And it's... Okay. This, so I'll give you an example. One month I decided, it was actually for, for a couple months, that I was not allowed to defend myself. In any situation that I got in, I wasn't okay. allowed to defend myself. <laughs> to what end? Um... It, <laughs> well, it, the end is when you look at, at, at the kind of people that we're supposed to be, when you look at the fruits of the spirit, when you look at um, righteous traits versus evil traits, and then when you, you're self-reflective and you look at your own life, inevitably you're going to go, whoa, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing wrong. Yeah. So the idea is well, to you take... Should. Yeah. You, you, know. you should. <laughs> you should. That's true. <laughs> if you don't, maybe that's where you should start. Your first application start challenge that. should be look for flaws, you know? <laughs> look for flaws. So once you found a flaw, I, like for for me personally, I, I recognized that I was that I was being uh, like very reactive in certain circumstances where right. where I would feel as if someone was like attacking my well being or something like at yeah. work or everything's so. personal. Everything became personal. I was like, okay, no, no, I'm not allowed to defend myself. I just have to be really easygoing. I just have to talk about the truth. No self defense. It's a good discipline. Yes, Challenge and for it sure. ended up it ended up really showing me a lot about about who I was and about mm -hmm. why I was doing the things that I was doing. And it gave me new insights. Right. I, I was able to go, okay, God, I need strength in this area. This is where yeah. I need help. This is where I need to rebuild part of my life. And, and so since then I've done other things like a, a time, an application challenge of being encouraging to other right. people, uh, trying to use my words to build them up, being so truthful, good, because that's a, a biblical quality Absolutely. as well, a godly qu a quality listening to people first. You know, everyone's always like, if you have nothing to say, don't say it. Or listen right. first, to speak later. Yes. It's so true. And so I, I use that as another application challenge. And 
you know, you, you shouldn't tell anyone that you're doing it. You should just do yeah. it. And then... <laughs> because otherwise they're going to call you out on it. They're going to call you it's out on it. It's going to be so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this should just be a you and God thing, yeah. I think. It's, so. it's for mm -hmm. personal growth. It yes. is. That's a good, that's a good way of, yeah. of challenging yourself, for And you sure. get to learn things about other people. And you get to learn things about yourself. And you get mm -hmm. to see how reliable God is Yeah. when, you know... Yeah, I've also done one. I remember one of the first ones that I did, I think I was 16 or 17. I decided that I was not going to talk about people behind their backs, which was a huge thing. It's massive about like that teenage, age, especially. Teenage yeah. girls, it's hard. Teenage girl. And I wasn't saying anything nasty. Like, I wasn't that kind of a person, but it was a really big challenge to be like, no, we're not going to talk about this person it, right and now. And yeah. to stand up for that when yes. other people are too. Like, I yeah. feel like that that's definitely something that I know I can struggle with Yeah. because I'm like, oh, I didn't say anything, but I'm still listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still bad. Yeah. You still shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, for sure. It's so, a really good one. Yeah, application it's a really, it's a really good one. It's really good. Yes. Thanks. I think a lot of it came from, like, growing up and going to going to the different youth groups and stuff and hearing the pastors really challenge mm. you and being like, are yeah. you applying this to your life? And I remember me going, I don't know if I am. Yeah. Yeah. And so and not this just was one reading, way. Yeah. yeah. Not just to, reading the Bible, but applying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, huge. that's really good. Yeah. Anyone have anything else? Any closing statements? No. We're good. Nope. So each that's, chose that's three right. healthy habits. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed our discussion today, and I hope you join us next time on On the Table. Thank you for joining the discussion we've thrown on the table today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, you can give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content from Bible Discovery TV. You can also find On the Table on Facebook with our latest episodes and some bonus content.